Sample problem 5.8. Previous ones we've been looking at locating the centroid, meaning the center of area or the center of volume or the center of a line. Mainly we looked at the center of area, the centroid. Now let's look at the center of mass. Okay, center of mass of this bracket and shaft combination. The vertical face, this vertical face over there, is made from sheet metal which has a mass of Right, this is a mass intensity now. Okay, 25 kilogram per meter squared. So if you want to find the total mass, you have to calculate the area. You multiply by the area to get the total mass. So that's the vertical one. The material of the horizontal base is 40. It has a mass of 40 kilogram per meter squared. And then the steel shaft has a density of 7.83 megagram per cubic meter. Megagram, right? Kilogram, 10 to the 3. Megagram, 10 to the 6. Okay. All right, so how do you determine the center of mass? Remember, it is the total mass times x bar. This is just uh, uh, this is just an example about the x, um, the distance about the y-axis, right? This x distance is equal to what? The sum of x m, right? So the total mass of the entire system multiplied by a moment arm about the y-axis. By the way. We don't use this. I'm just in this specific case. You'll see why we don't use this x one. I'm just using this as, as an example. So the total, the moment of the sum is equal to the sum of the moments of all the individual components. But you'll see why we don't use the x one. Uh, we actually only use in this specific case. We only use uh, this one and this one for y and z. Okay. Now I'll ask you why. Why is that the case? Why is that the case? Okay, so let's do it. First of all, set up your your axes. You've got x there. Set set up, or in their case, they set up the origin here. Um, so you can see the y-axis passes through this uh, shaft, passes through the shaft, and there is the origin. There's the z-axis, the x-axis, and the y-axis. So notice the way that they've set it up. By the way, you can set up your axis wherever you want in the universe. You should always get the same result. Okay, you can set up your your z, x, and y over there, there. You can set up the origin there, there, wherever you want. You can set it up there. You can set it up in your garden. You can set it up on your roof. Wherever you want, you should always get the same answer. Okay? So notice, first of all, that it is symmetric about the y-axis. Okay? Symmetric about the y-axis. So what immediately, what is your intuition there? That the center of mass needs to lie along the, not, not necessarily the y-axis, but it needs to lie in the z-y plane. Right? So if you draw a a plane through the zy axes, then you'll see that the center of mass has got nothing to do with it, uh, along the x-axis. So that is why, in this case, we're not going to. There's no going to be no x component of the center of mass because it's not it's not going to lie on any part of the x-axis that's not zero. So we're not going to need that one. We will need this one, right? Sum of y m and z m is the sum of z m. Okay? So that's the first thing, symmetry. Always check your problem. Is there symmetry? Okay? Is there symmetry? That's a question mark. Okay, so now what is the what is the uh, the first step? Well, we want to try to determine these guys on the right-hand side. 
meaning we need to calculate, we need to first break it up into various components. And then we need to determine the, the uh, distance from their, each of these centroids to the, the axes. And we need to determine the mass of each of these components. Okay, so they've broken it up into that is component one, right? This big guy there is component two. That triangle is component three. Uh, this base is component four and the shaft is component five. So we need the mass of each of these components and we need their centroids, right? So let's, let's see. The first thing, what they say is that uh, de to determine the mass should be very straightforward. All you do is you calculate the area, calculate the area of each of these guys, calculate the area, calculate the area. Um, well, for this, for the shaft, you need to calculate the volume, right? Calculate the volume of that shaft, multiply it by that density, and you will get, you will get what, you will get this mass. Calculate the area of that semicircle, multiply it by 25 uh, meters 25 kilogram per meter squared and you should get that mass there and you do that for each of those Okay, is that clear? I think so now notice that this is a hole So we we have a negative mass there a negative mass Okay now For each of these um, components we need to determine the centroid so notice that this whole face over here Number one, it is in the XZ plane, so there's no Y component. So that's why for the centroid, you're not going to have any Y component there for, this, for the centroid, because it lies in the XZ plane. And the second thing is, as I mentioned earlier, is that there is symmetry. So the centroids for all of these components have to lie only on the Z axis. Okay, so let's look at this semicircle. So this is the uh, little formula to calculate the centroid of the semicircle. Four times the radius divided by three pi. Um, so I think you need to go to the back of the textbook or you can also look at sample problem 5.3 to see where this equation comes from, this formula. So 4 times the radius divided by 3 pi gives you 21.2 millimeters. So that's in the positive z direction. So if that is 50 millimeters, then it's just there, right? And so we write that in there. That is my z. Z bar, which is the distance from the centroid. Okay. Then x is 0 and y is 0. Then what about this one? Let's look at um, uh, component two. So this, it's uh, 150 high or, or, or low, below the Z, uh, in the negative Z direction. And it is 150 wide. So the centroid is right there, the geometrical center. It's gonna be minus 75 Z, right? And zero X and zero Y. That's where we get the minus 75. Okay, so we've taken care of this one. What about object three? Object three, we need to find the centroid. Again, because of symmetry, there's no X component and there's no Y component. So the, the centroid has to be in the negative Z. So we go down from there, down to there. That is, that distance there is going to be 75. 150 um, minus 100, no, that's that's 50, my mistake. That is minus 50, okay? And then remember that the centroid of a triangle is a third, right? If that's, the, that's that height there, it's a third of that height, which is 25. Um, 
So that is, that should be 50 minus a third of 75. So just hold on, I've gotten confused, hold on. Sorry about that, we all get confused. It's okay to get confused. So it is the 50 plus 50 because the centroid is over there and that that distance there is a third of the height of 75 so we've got 50 that that length is 50 plus 50 gives us minus 100 okay minus 100 so we've got now our z uh, the centroid now what else are we we still need okay what about this guy number four well we know that it is in the it's in the it is para, it's perpendicular um, to the zx plane and it is at minus 150 z right that's the location minus 150 you go down minus 150 and then you need to go in the y direction 50 right so that point there is minus um, 150 in the z and it's plus 50 in the y direction and so it's still zero in the x so that's what you're going to get minus 50 in the z and plus 50 in the y direction okay so and then the, for this guy again because of symmetry zero in the x zero in the z and the centroid is going to be located at plus 75 in the y because it's of its it's half of the length okay so if i haven't thoroughly confused you yet please make sure that you know how to get all these uh, quantities in this table then you multiply this you multiply these two the mass times y mass times z and you get this you sum them up remember that we, we're still it's all comes from the principle of moments okay you need to make sure you know that Right, we put it into our principle of moments equation and we solve for our y bar and our z bar. So 53.3 and minus 45.7. So where is it? It's somewhere there and then down over here. Minus. Right, so there is our centroid, our center of mass. So again, if we hang something over that right if you take a cable uh, and you wrap it around here and you hang it right over the center of mass so if you look at it from the left hand side okay if you look at it from the left hand side and you've located your center of mass so you're looking at it the x-axis is coming out of the page the z-axis is up the y-axis is to the right um, and you hang something over there, for example, right over that center of mass, then there'll be no rotation. Okay? All right, so good luck.